Mascots are some of the most athletic, hardest working, underappreciated, and abused entertainers in the world. A lot of them are also complete scumbags. Due to sweat, the average mascot loses 8.6 pounds every game. Their costumes, on average, add 21 pounds to their body weight, and the temperature inside the suit adds 40 degrees of heat to anyone who wears it. This makes it an extremely dangerous job. According to a study by Johns Hopkins, over half of professional sports mascots have suffered a heat stroke. Mascots have been abused by fans, abused by players, abused by coaches, and have even passed away while trying to entertain fans. And this may be why a lot of them have gotten into trouble for doing some pretty messed up things. Mascots have ran over and injured players. They've planned premeditated attacks on other mascots for revenge. One of the nation's most beloved mascots has been sued dozens of times for abusing strangers, and one mascot caused one of the biggest scandals in baseball history after he got caught supplying players with illegal things. As crazy as mascots have become, they are nothing compared to the original mascots, who believe it or not, were usually just disabled people who convinced players they had mystical powers. Or people like this kid who was pretty much kidnapped and used as a mascot just because the Tigers thought he was good luck. In the early 1900s, the Tigers met a homeless child in Chicago who they called Lil Rastus. They brought him all the way back to Detroit just so he could be their full-time mascot, which basically just meant going to each game and hanging out in the dugout for no money whatsoever except for food and shelter. Ty Cobb was so convinced of this kid's powers, he would sneak him into his hotel room and have him sleep underneath his bed every single road game just because he thought it was good luck. Unfortunately, later in the year, the Tigers went on a losing streak, thought little Rastus had lost his powers, and fired him. But the Cubs then hired him as their good luck charm. His good luck worked perfectly and brought them all the way to the World Series against his former team, the Detroit Tigers. But the Cubs ended up losing Game 7 and abandoned him in Detroit, 300 miles away from his home. During this time, people still believed in the ancient myth that hunchbacks were good luck, which led to several teams to have full-time hunchbacks in their dugout just so players could rub them before going to the plate. But by far the most absurd mascot was a guy named Charlie Faust, the only mascot in the history of professional sports to actually play in an official game. He was a 30-year-old man who was more than likely mentally handicapped. He traveled from Kansas all the way to New York just to tell the Giants manager that he needed to be on the team because he was told by a fortune teller it was his destiny to win the World Series for the New York Giants. The manager thought this was hilarious, gave him a uniform, put him on the roster, had him catch fly balls during warm-ups so fans and players could laugh at him, and told him to warm up in the bullpen throughout the game for good luck. As soon as they signed Charlie, they ended up going an insane 36-2. Shortly after, teams started transitioning to live mascots, and a lot of these turned out to be terrible ideas. Like this condor with an 11 foot wingspan. It escaped its owner, got caught, only to escape its owner again, then attack the players on the bench in the middle of the national anthem. In the early 1900s, the Cubs used actual bears as their mascots. They even built a cage in a park across the street from the stadium where it lived. Until one day, the bear escaped, started roaming around Chicago, and was eventually shot and killed in a tailor shop. Over 100 years later, and teams still use live mascots, who sometimes get into trouble. The Georgia Bulldog mascot attacked a player in the middle of a game. The 1,700-pound Texas Longhorn tried to attack the Georgia mascot on the field, but nothing compares to the mysterious death and cover-up 
of this mascot that shook the campus of Louisiana Tech. Tech 20, a four-year-old bulldog that acted as the school's mascot, would go to games, walk around campus, and was cared for by a host family. One day, one of the caretakers at the university hospital claimed they left the dog out to pee, came out five minutes later, and it was gone. This became huge news around campus. Search parties were created, flyers were posted everywhere, and a $2,000 reward was offered to anyone that could find it. Turns out, this was all part of a massive cover-up. After days of searching, it was discovered that an employee had let the dog out to pee, reportedly left him there for hours. When they came back, they discovered the dog had passed away from overheating. In a panic, they made up a story that the dog had simply ran away. The employee was immediately fired. Instances like this are why most teams elect to have a modern day mascot, usually a guy in a suit who performs stunts so stupid yet insane the crowd has no choice but to love them. A type of mascot that was revolutionized by a chicken who was so good at his job, he ended up fighting for his life in court after being sued for hundreds of thousands of dollars. The chicken was originally a college student who got paid $2 an hour to dress up in a chicken suit and promote the radio station he worked at. He instantly became a superstar in San Diego, attending every Padres home game. He became so famous that the Braves literally tried to trade their backup catcher to San Diego in exchange for the chicken. But this trade couldn't go through because the Padres did not employ the chicken. It was the radio station KGB who ended up firing him and suing him for 250 grand because he began performing as a chicken without the radio station logo on his costume. The lawsuit was set to end his career, but after pleading his case and making a new chicken suit, the chicken was allowed to perform around the country. However, he would go on to get sued for a lot worse. The chicken has performed for over 40 years, has appeared in over 5,000 games, and was even named one of the top 100 most influential people in sports of the 20th century. He also got sued by Barney after they discovered he was doing a skit throughout the country showing him beating up a man in a purple dinosaur costume. In a more serious case, he allegedly tackled and rolled over a cheerleader in hopes to entertain fans. She says the injuries she suffered forced her to retire. He was ordered to pay $300,000 to this cheerleader. As bad as this was, the popularity of the chicken inspired teams of all sports to get their own mascot. The Philly Fanatic was created a few years later in 1977. The Pirate Parrot and the Oriole Bird were created in 1979, and these mascots have been integral parts of the game day experience for all three of these teams ever since. They've also been sued, arrested, and injured multiple times. The truth is, history tells us, if you dress up in an oversized costume and start running around stadiums, you're bound to get in trouble eventually. A lot of times, it's for stupid things, like the Wisconsin Badger who got arrested just for crowd surfing. The Cincinnati Bearcat did something a little worse. He got arrested for throwing snowballs at players in the middle of a game. The Royals got sued after their mascot Slugger allegedly hit a lady in the face with a hot dog while throwing them into the stands for a promotion. The court ruled in Slugger's favor, agreeing that getting hit in the face with a hot dog is in fact an inherent risk of attending a baseball game. But the mascot who holds the title for being sued more than any other mascot ever is probably the Philadelphia Fanatic. He's been accused and sued for throwing a woman in a pool without water in it, climbing on and injuring a 75-year-old woman at a minor league game jumping on and injuring a 68-year-old man, accidentally kicking and injuring a pregnant woman, distracting a fan with his theatrics, which caused them to get hit in the face with a foul ball, tackling and ferociously hugging a man at an event in a paint store, crashing the fanatic mobile while drunk, fleeing the scene and leaving the costume in the car as evidence, and even hitting a woman 
in the face while shooting a hot dog out of a hot dog cannon. However, the woman never sued for that. As bad as these accusations were, they're not as bad as impersonating a mascot, which has literally gotten people arrested and sued in federal court. This guy tried to do it at a Dodgers playoff game, jumped on top of the dugout, did a couple moves, then ended up getting arrested. But that is nothing compared to Billy Cub. A mascot who would buy his own costume would never step foot in the stadium, but would hang out outside with a cooler, entertain fans, and ask for tips, all in hopes that the Cubs would one day hire him as their official mascot. He did this for years. The Cubs sent him a cease and desist. He ignored it. According to him, they offered him 15 thousand dollars to quit he declined but when a video of him punching someone in the face at a bar outside the stadium surfaced, the cubs had enough they sued him in federal court the case was later settled and billy cub the fake cubs mascot was never seen again but by far the most notorious mascot crime was committed by pirate parrot who found himself in the middle of a massive drug controversy the Pittsburgh drug trials consisted of over a dozen major league players testifying about their use of recreational substances during the 80s. During the scandal, it was revealed that the Pirates mascot, the Pirate Parrot, helped supply multiple players. After getting caught by the FBI, the Pirate Parrot cooperated and began wearing a wire to bust another team employee. His cooperation, along with others, helped the FBI arrest and sentence seven people to prison and caused as many as 14 major leaguers to admit their involvement. This scandal tore the league and the Pirates apart. They ended up finishing last and were even considering moving cities immediately after the trial ended. The team ended up selling to a man who kept them in Pittsburgh, and due to his cooperation, the mascot ended up getting zero jail time. However, he was fired. But as frequently as mascots have found themselves in trouble off the field, they are even more likely to find it on the field. Just like Brutus, who was randomly attacked by another mascot in a premeditated ambush that literally took years to plan. But before we get to that, a word from today's sponsor. It's the holidays and you know that you're gonna need a pair of reliable headphones while you travel. And Raycon is perfect. They offer wireless earbuds, headphones, and speakers, which all offer premium sound, an insanely comfortable fit, and 54 hours of battery life. Ever since Raycon sent me a pair, I've been wearing these earbuds nonstop, and seriously, to me, it feels like this battery lasts forever. It also makes the perfect gift, because seriously, who doesn't need headphones? And best of all, they start at half the price of other premium audio brands. And right now, they have better deals than ever. All you gotta do is click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash baseball doesn't to get 15% off site-wide with code HOLIDAY. They're also having new pop-up deals every single day during Raycon's countdown to Christmas. I'll try to keep the description box updated with the latest offers, but just so you know, you can always go to buyraycon.com slash baseball doesn't to get the best deals available on Raycon. Do it right now. In high school, the man in the Ohio Bobcat costume decided he hated Ohio State so much he was going to become the mascot of Ohio just so he could beat down Brutus on national television. By the time they played Ohio State, he had already dropped out of school, but was so committed to the attack, he attended the game anyway. As Ohio State started running onto the field, the Bobcat made a dead sprint towards Brutus, tried to tackle him, but Brutus got away. He then followed Brutus down to the end zone and blindsided him by jumping on his back and bringing him to the ground. He was then taken away by security. The attack went viral, but luckily for him, he faced no punishment from Ohio whatsoever because by the time it happened, 
he wasn't even enrolled in the school. But mascot on mascot violence is actually pretty common. The Oregon Duck and the Houston Cougar got into a small scuffle when the duck blindsided the cougar while he was doing push-ups. This seemed like all fun and games until they squared off later and the duck took things a little too far. He was suspended one game. Police had to step in after Duke Dog kicked Chauncey the Chancellor, causing him to tackle him to the ground twice. The Duke Dog tried to chase down Chauncey, but the police prevented any further altercation. The Duke Dog was fired the next day. In 2008, Jazz the Jaguar confronted Eli the Eagle, took him to the ground, and beheaded him. Eli the Eagle threw a cheerleader out of the way to get revenge, but was taken down for a second time. Both mascots were ejected and suspended. But other mascots are not the only ones who hate opposing mascots. Manager Tommy Lasorda is perhaps the biggest mascot hater ever and was so much against them, he assaulted them on multiple occasions. The first incident was against the San Diego Chicken, who did a recurring bit where he would stomp on the opposing team's hat. Lasorda saw the chicken do this and was so pissed after the game grabbed him by the neck and said, The next time you do it out on the field, I'm going to grab you right here and your eyeballs are going to pop out. He even once got a mascot ejected after Yuppie dressed up in a nightgown and went to sleep on top of the Dodgers dugout. This pissed off Lasorda so badly he told him, he was so fed up with the mascot, he told on him and had the umpire and security eject him from the game. I don't want him jumping on that dugout. But by far, the worst mascot abuse from Tommy Lasorda happened to the Philadelphia Fanatic, who brought out a stuffed pillow shaped as Lasorda onto the field and mocked him with it. Lasorda left the dugout to confront him, then stole his ATV. This caused the fanatic to call him fat. Lasorda chased him down, pushed him down, took the pillow, and hit him with it. The fanatic continued to mock him, which caused Lasorda to throw a baseball at his head. But it's not managers that have made mascotting more dangerous. It's the stunts, which have been getting increasingly more risky for years. The Mariner Moose ran over outfielder Coco Crisp while riding his ATV. Crisp was uninjured, but Mariner Moose wasn't so lucky when after trying to ride on the back of an ATV with roller skates, lost control, and collided with the wall at full speed, fractured his ankle, and had to spend two nights in the hospital. Slider had a similar injury in the 1995 ALCS when he fell from the stands onto the field in the middle of a play. This was kind of funny at the time, but he tore every ligament in his knee. This, however, did not stop him from coming back the next day with a cast on. But it's one thing for a mascot to get injured while performing a stunt. When they get injured by an angry fan or player, that is significantly worse. This fan was dragged out of the arena after pouring his beer on the Utah Jazz mascot. The mascot got his revenge by throwing a bucket of water at him and he was dragged out of the arena again. This same mascot got into an even more dangerous altercation after he held up a sign calling a fan a loser. This led to pushing and an ejection. The mascot stole the fan's hat, he got free of security, charged him, and got completely destroyed by the jazz bear. These instances were both completely fake and staged. But this isn't always the case. In fact, this major leaguer was literally arrested after he assaulted a mascot in the middle of the game. And unfortunately, this kind of abuse isn't that uncommon. The Baltimore Orioles mascot had to spend a month in a wheelchair after he was allegedly pushed off a wall, fell 15 feet, and broke his ankle. He sued the man, won the case, was granted $59,000, and the Orioles gave him a uniform with a purple heart on it. In 1984, the Giants created a anti-mascot, which was specifically made to be hated. Unfortunately, fans hated him way too much. He was consistently pelted with trash by fans and even players, and eventually sued the Padres after two of their players thought it would be funny to push him down and assault him. 
he injured his back, never mascotted again, and won $2,000 in a lawsuit. But by far, the biggest mascot abuser was Randall Simon, who hit a girl dressed up as a sausage while she was doing the sausage race in Milwaukee. This became a massive scandal and investigation. Police showed up to the victim's house, she was put on national television to tell her story, and Randall was arrested for battery. He was suspended and fined by the league and became one of the most hated players in the world. But the victim herself didn't seem to blame him at all, said she got no injuries and thought it was quote, hilarious. Randall ended up only having to pay $432. The victim was given a free vacation to his home country of Curacao and she was even awarded with a certificate of bravery from the National Hot Dog and Sausage Council.